Hi there folks, now today we're going to talk about another very popular technical indicator that's used by many traders and that's Bollinger Bands. Now the Bollinger Bands were created by a guy called John Bollinger in the 1980s used to help predict turning points in the markets. John is still around, very active in the markets apparently still. Now John if you're listening in, if you're doing your trolls around YouTube and you see this video, maybe get in contact, we'll have you here on the channel. So. What exactly are Bollinger Bands? Well, basically, they will look like something like this on a chart. Now, in a moment, we'll get on to the real life charts and I'll show you in real life action. But they basically look like this. And it, compri it is comprised of three main lines. First of all, you've got the middle band. Now, the middle band is basically a simple moving average. The default, I think, that most use these days is a 20 SMA, so it's a 20 period uh, simple moving average there on the orange line going through the middle. Then you've got the upper band, which is two standard deviations above the center middle band. Don't worry about standard deviation, we'll get to that in a moment. And then you've got the lower band, and that's two standard deviations below the middle line, below the 20 period moving average. And the idea is basically is that if prices move away from the middle band, if they divert away from the middle band, at some point they are going to reverse back in, revert to the mean, revert to that simple moving average. And it uses those standard deviations to give those outer bands. So, standard deviation. What is standard deviation? Pretty clear, isn't it? It's all there, it is, there, there it is, standard deviation. Don't worry about that. You don't need to know the formula of standard deviation, but it is a widely used statistical valuation and it's often used um, in determining the probability, the probability of things happening, the probability of prices moving in certain areas. It's a measure of dispersion from the mean. It basically does exactly that. It measures how far away prices can move from the average. And this is what it looks like on one of those histogram charts that I'm sure you've seen in the past. So this center line down the middle, that is our mean, that is our average, that in our case is our 20 period simple moving average. The bottom here, you can see the different standard deviations, this is the, the symbol for standard deviation. So one standard deviation will see 34.1%, basically times two in either direction, so that would be about 68% of price should be contained at one standard deviation. But what the Bollinger Band does, it looks at two standard deviations typically. Two standard deviations will basically look at a 95.4% um, that prices will contain, be contained within that band. So that's basically 40, uh, almost 48% either side. If the market moves away from that, it should revert back to the mean. That's basically what the standard deviation means. It looks back and sees where price has been contained in the past and helps us look at where prices may be contained in the future. Now, when you look at this on a chart, it can look really, really powerful. Okay, so what I've done here, I basically picked a currency pair, British pound against the US dollar. It's a one hour chart. I've loaded in the Bollinger Bands from the default settings here uh, on trading view. So we've got the 20 period moving average and we've got two standard deviations giving the upper band and the lower band um, of the channel. And if you look at the chart, you actually think, hang on, this is the holy grail. This is everything I have been looking for. Every time that prices go to the outers of the channel, it moves back into the mean. And indeed, it does appear that way. But this is the problem that I think, uh, looking back at these on a chart creates. It gives you like almost a false uh, sense of security. Many rookie traders will be there buying at the bottom and selling at the top just because we're on the top of a Bollinger Band. And I think personally, that most rookie traders, most people that are using Bollinger Bands are using them in the wrong way. I'm going to show you in a moment exactly how the rookie trader is using Bollinger Bands. But more importantly, I'm going to show you the correct way that I think you should use Bollinger Bands if indeed you're looking to use indicators in your trading. Come on, let's go. Okay, so here we are on the pound against the US dollar again. This is the daily chart and indeed, again, it looks fantastic. Now, I think the way that most are using the Bollinger Bands incorrectly is that they're literally trying to pick tops and bottoms every time price hits the upper or the lower band of the Bollinger Band. So for example, they would be buying down here as price goes below the lower band, they'll be selling up here, they'll be buying up here, they'll be selling up here, and they'll be buying up here and selling up here. Yeah, it looks fantastic, doesn't it? 
But let's play that now in real time. I'm going to scroll back and look at unseen data and just scroll through a candle at a time and seeing if that strategy works in real life. It looks fantastic in hindsight, but what's it like in real time? Okay, in order to scroll back in time on the trading platform, uh, just scroll back using your mouse as far as you want to go. I'm not going to uh, cherry pick this. Just go anywhere you like. Okay, um, make that a bit smaller. Um, and then you use this uh, replay button at the top here. Uh, you literally click on there and it will basically take uh, the far right of the chart to where you've clicked that vertical line. And you can advance one candle at a time by hitting this uh, little arrow key with a line at the top here. We're currently at the mean, just advancing one candle at a time. Okay, so we're now going through the lower band. Um, this would have been a buy signal there, uh, but we've traded on through. Uh, so we're just going to carry on through that and again through again. So we're going through, we're going through. Um, still, we're going through lower and lower as we go. So all these are giving you buy signals as we breach through, uh, causing uh, multiple, multiple losses until at some point it does turn and it moves back up, um, which is not there, but it does at some point, I'm sure. Um, okay, um, and there we go. That's a perfect bottom. Looking back, it looks great, doesn't it? it looks great that you would have had uh, this little turning point um, in hindsight. Um, and then, of course, we move up to the top band, and uh, that's a sell, okay? And that, indeed, would have moved back to the uh, to the mean and back then down towards the lower band, where that becomes a buy. Okay, and off we go again, back to the top. It uh, didn't quite work. We came through again, hits the lower part of the band. That's another losing trade there. Okay, all these buying trades... Uh, being signaled or losing money for you and then we've got a sell trade that may have made some money for you uh, as it reverts back to the mean uh, that's another buy trade there uh, that one maybe would have made some money if you'd have got that one uh, timed correctly let's just move this up a bit make it a little bit clearer there we go um, and sell trade prop you there would have made you money are you beginning to notice a pattern here there's some buy trades that would have cost you money as we trade on lower. So the problem is we don't know how long price action is going to remain outside of those two standard deviations. Yes, it should contain price 95% of the time, but uh, um, but that also means that 5% of the time it will stay with outside of that range and give you false signals. Okay, there's a sell signal there. Um, again, that would have maybe worked. Um, and so forth. That signal maybe would have got stopped out again if you're taking the sell trades there. Another sell trade there. There's uh, three candles where we keep going higher and higher. You know, that there alone is about, you know, 50, 60 pips or so. Okay, and now we're starting to go higher. You're taking sell trades every time you breach through. Yep. And uh, you would have been losing money along those as well. Okay, but now let's look back at that. Looking back again, well, that's great. Buying here, selling here, buying here, selling here, buying here, selling here. See what I'm saying? When you actually go through it in real time, it's not as powerful, as uh, as accurate as you may think. But it does give you a false sense of security when you look back at the chart and say, wow, price has been contained in that band all the time. But trading in real time sometimes is very, very different. One thing I think um, uh, is useful about the Bollinger Bands is... Uh, giving you a visualization of when trend is about to happen. This typically, uh, this area here would be known as a Bollinger squeeze. That basically means when the price is, is going into range. When you see the Bollinger bands move out as they're moving out here, that's known as the Bollinger bulge. Um, when the, there's a bulge in those bands and those channels, that can indicate a strong trend is in play and likely uh, to continue. But do remember, do remember, these are are lagging indicators. The moving average is a lagging indicator. Okay, so you need to be uh, certainly aware of that. So here's another example of how we have the Bollinger squeeze. The bands are moving in and they start to widen out. That is an indication that maybe a trend is about to begin. So what the rookie trader is doing is basically selling into that rising trend, losing money as you go, well, the real clue was the fact that the Bollinger Bands are now widening, maybe giving you a clue that the trend is changing in that particular direction. So that's the way I want you to think about using the Bollinger Bands. 
looking for the Bollinger squeeze to turn into a Bollinger bulge and then look to get in on the trend. The best way I think to use Bollinger bands is with the trend. I think most rookie traders, when they're coming into the markets for the first time, should be looking at trend. So using Bollinger bands with the prevailing trend, I think could be a powerful way that you could use them. Let's have a look at that now. Okay, so sticking with the pound against the US dollar, this is now the four hour chart. So this is our Bollinger squeeze. This is when the, the bands are narrowing in on themselves, indicating a ranging market. Waiting for that bulge to happen. Now we are in this bulge. I'm not trading this move to the upside when I see this bulge happening below the SMA. I'm not going to be taking any of these buy trades as we hit uh, the lower band. As we bounce back up through and we hit the upper band, yep, I'm going to be taking the sell trades there. I'm going to be taking sell trades there, waiting for the trend continuation to the downside. I'm going to ignore all these buys in here, all these false signals to tell you to buy. I'm going to be avoiding those. Bit back up to the top band again. I'm going to sell there as well for trend continuation. That one will move right back down to the lower band again. And back up again. I'm going to be taking those sell trades again. And it was moving back to the mean again. And back up to the top band. I'm going to be taking my sell trades there. I'm going to avoid all these long trades here. All these false trades. That's going to cost you money. It's going to bleed money out of the account. So basically, I'll be avoiding those. OK, so that was historical data. I've now just zoomed all the way forward to real time. So this is now a recording um, on the 18th of November. You see here at the moment, I'm not going to be buying any of these up moves. I'm going to be waiting for the uh, squeeze to turn into a bulge. And here we have the squeeze turning into a bulge. Price is below. I'm going to be looking for sell trades. Obviously, high time frame analysis will also tell you uh, that this currency pair uh, is in a downtrend at the moment. I'm not going to be buying here. I'm not going to be buying here waiting for the reversal as it keeps touching the lower band. I'll be waiting to touch the upper band for a potential sell if I was trading Bollinger Band for entries with price action maybe as well. You'll be selling there, enjoying that move to the downside. I'm not going to be buying here. Not going to be buying here. Some will work, I'm sure. I'm going to be waiting to sell. I'm still only selling. The trend is down. I'm trading the Bollinger Band entries with trend. And that is the way I think people should be using the Bollinger Bands. Again, pulling up to the top of part of the band and we hit the top band, uh, giving you potential for all this move, ignoring all these false buys down in here. At the time of writing, uh, recording, I should say, we are just hitting the top band. I don't know what's going to happen in the next few hours or so, but that's only selling for me. I won't be buying this currency pair at the moment if I was trading the Bollinger Band strategy entry. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully you learned a bit. At least now you know what Bollinger Bands are, whether you decide to use them or not. At least now you know exactly how to use them, as far as I'm concerned, at least. Now I'm, for one, not a big fan of too many technical indicators. I like to look at pure price action in conjunction with maybe support and resistance and so forth, maybe a couple of moving averages. But technical indicators, they do play a part for many, many successful traders. I will say this, however, whatever technical indicator you're using, Bollinger Bands, MACD, Stochastics, RSIs, what have you, using in conjunction with price action maybe is the better way to go. Now, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Don't forget to leave a comment. As always, I get back to them in due course. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you don't already do so. And if you hit that bell notification, well, you know what that does by now, I am sure. Now, we are streaming live around the clock, up to eight times a day. If you want to take part in that, you can do so. Take out a seven-day free trial. Just head over to forexsignals.com. Go through the registration. It doesn't cost you a dime. You can see what we're all about. Join us in our streams and interact with us as well in real time. If that is not your thing, that is not a problem. I'll see you next week. Have a good week. Now, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. Don't forget to leave a comment as well. I do read them all in due course. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you don't already do so. And that bell notification, well, you know what that does.